Whoa, yeah, swear to God I'm with it I don't see nobody in my lane It's quite go get it like me Whoa, please don't be wasting my time with that business Who are you kidding, man? Yeah, 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 yeah Alright guys, what's going on? It's Jacob here, welcome to another video. Welcome to the second installment of what it really feels like being 5% body fat. I'm not saying I'm 5% body fat right now, but I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'm probably, I may not be big right now, but I'm, I'm feeling relatively lean and I, I certainly was 5% body fat. If I'm not now, then I was for a lengthy period of time, probably at least 10 to 12 weeks. And that was because I did two bodybuilding shows this year, eight weeks apart. So I'm sitting here three weeks post show and I am doing my best to delve into my prep. Honestly, my YouTube channel, not only is it a way for me to spread a message and to make videos like this, but it's also a way for me to work through certain things in my head. And, uh, you know, usually once I've made the video, I've talked it out, I've gone and edited it, which means I watch it again. Usually that subject or whatever I'm talking about has sort of you know, filtered through my brain, I've done what I needed to do with it, and I move on with life. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. So today's video, I'm hoping we bring in a fair few um, viewers. You know, any bodybuilding fans, anyone out there that's that's looking at doing their first show, um, I guess I will say off the bat that I'm natural. I'm a lifetime natural. I've never taken any performance enhancing drugs, and I don't plan on it. So my prep was done completely naturally through diet, and training alone and uh, so that's that's how I'm gonna be prefacing I am prefacing this video with that because that is that is the truth so you know in a previous video I, I talked about the positives of being shredded and and at the end of the day there's not many um, and it came down to three three times three moments of the day the first was when I first first got up okay you look in the mirror you see yourself shredded and you're instantly hit with a, a feeling of euphoria you know what I mean any any negatives that you might have felt or you might be feeling at the time go away because you're like fuck man I've put in so much work and this is the result the second moment that I'm you know euphoric is in the gym when I've got a pump you know you've, you've gone in there in a hoodie you've sort of done a few sets you feel the pump coming if it comes depending on you know when you're 5% body fat if you don't have too many carbs in your system you ain't getting a pump that's for sure that would have to be one of the shit things in fact, we'll start it off. We'll start it off with that. At five percent body fat, if you haven't eaten, if you haven't fueled yourself properly, which if you are continuing to cut, you probably haven't. But if you're trying to maintain a five percent body fat level, you probably have. You know, you won't be getting a pump in the gym or anything like what you what you're used to or what you could um, with full glycogen stores. So at the same time, at that same moment when you're in the gym, you might not have a pump, but you do feel the best. You're going to feel during that day okay you've 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 got volume in the muscle um, you're probably going to be in some pretty decent lighting uh, depending on what gym you're at and you're going to feel good so that's the second point of the day the third point of the day where i felt really good and really productive and positive was during my fasting periods believe it or not so you know you you believe it or not in the eight hour or six hour period that i used each day to eat i was the most miserable because once i started eating i didn't want to stop you know what I mean? So I used those times, those times where I was fasting, um, to easily not think about food because I, I I knew that my next meal wasn't coming, and I just didn't think about it. But once I did start at like two o'clock in the afternoon or whatever before I trained, fuck man, it was a it was a slippery slope, and there was many nights where I couldn't handle it and I couldn't keep it together. But you know, we did our best and we ended up we ended up competing, and that's that's the main thing. So look, when you're five percent body fat. I'm just going to come out and say it. Every single thing, well, not every single thing, but most of your thoughts, most of your day is going to be based around <laughs> either eating, uh, which doesn't last very long because you're so fucking hungry. Every meal goes, goes down in about a minute flat or when you can eat next. So you're either going to be obsessing about <laughs> oh, but your whole fucking life starts to revolve around when you can eat or when you can't eat or how much you've eaten or fuck I've eaten too much or mate it's eating disorder conducive it is conducive 
to developing eating disorders. I'm not going to lie. The longer you stay at 5% body fat, the longer you've got the chance of developing some form of either anxiety or depression around food or, you know, at the very least, a, um, you know, some form of, of eating disorder. You know what I mean? Some, maybe, maybe even a form of, of binging. You know, it's, it's serious. It is serious. It can, can get pretty serious. So you've got to be careful. You've just got to be aware. That's all. So with that in mind, I, I tend to think that if I wasn't doing an intermittent fasting approach, if I was beginning to eat at breakfast time when I woke up, which I should have been, obviously the most efficient way of shredding down is eating small amounts at, you know, eating small amounts multiple times per day. That's something I just can't do. Or I didn't want to do. So, you know, I can't, I can't, fuck man, if I had have had my first meal at like seven in the morning and had to obsess about when I was going to eat for the rest of the whole day, nah man, nah, that wasn't going to work. So that's why I decided to intermittent fast. But obviously, man, the overall thing I'm trying to get to here is that you will obsess about food. It doesn't matter what approach you've got, you're going to obsess about it. It's just the way it is. But then you wake up that next morning after going through all of that obsession and torture, mental torture the day before. You wake up that morning and you see your shredded six pack. And I'm telling you, the positives outweigh the negatives. But we're talking about negatives today. So... What is, you know, what does it actually really feel like being 5% body fat? I'm not saying I'm 5% body fat right now, but I'm relatively lean and I feel flat. I am flat right now. So if I was to tense, have a pump under awesome lighting, I would look a whole lot different right now. If I went out and did 20 sets of side, <laughs> if I went out and did 20 sets of shoulder raises and 20 sets of, of tricep pushdowns and then came and sit back down, I'd look like a totally different person. But that's what being 5% body fat does. You know, you're flat most of the time. You're not holding, you know, a huge amount of glycogen at all times. You don't have full glycogen stores at all times, which someone who's bulking gen generally would, you know, if they're wanting to stay as anabolic as possible. So, yeah, it sucks. You're flat a lot of the time. You are flat. Uh, I am a lifetime natural. I I've never taken any steroids, so I don't have that, that full feeling, you know, unless I do it through nutrition, which is possible, but it's not conducive to staying at 5% body fat. <laughs> so yeah, so I did use intermittent fasting and I, I did feel, I guess, productive during those times, but at the same time, you know, I wasn't optimal. Um, I, I still had brain fog and it, it was still noticeable. You know, when you get to seven, six down to 5% body fat, that fatigue factor really sets in. Doesn't matter if I had a big breakfast. Two hours later, I'd still feel it. You know, doesn't matter if I had a big sleep. Two hours later, I would still feel it creeping in. And then you've got to go and train under that fatigue. I mean, it's you know, it's not easy. Bodybuilding's not easy. So with the the general loss of energy, I I think that's where people start to talk about their loss of libido. Okay, because my libido was fine. Like it still is. It's it's never actually worried me. Um, you know. It's never come to the point where I, I can't get it up. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, if, <laughs> if the energy is there and the stimulus is there, it still works. So that's something I wanted to, to mention because, you know, a fair few bodybuilders out there, especially natural bodybuilders, have been at 5% body fat or under for a lengthy period of time, will say that their dick doesn't work. And I'm like, okay, that's worrying. I think I'd pull the pin at that point. I think I'd be seriously considering whether it was worth it being 5% body fat. You want to be 5% body fat to look better for the ladies, yet you can't use your dick? That's fucked up. Right? That's fucked up. That is the biggest... <laughs> that, that, that just doesn't make sense. So I'm led to believe through my experience that the only reason why I would have a loss of libido as such would be just a, a, a loss of energy. Okay? It's... it's, it's prioritizing what you want to use that energy for on a particular day and to think about women sex takes energy uh, that then takes energy from your brain to your I don't know how it all works but look energy is energy and if you're 5% body fat consistently week after week after week having to do what you have to do to maintain that your energy ain't gonna be optimal it's not so certain things that might have been up here as a priority will start to, to go down. If we talk about sleep, 
how does sleep change? How does sleep change? Now, I'm not, I'm not going to say this is a negative, although it is because it definitely, for me, I don't operate on four hours sleep a night usually. I'll operate on six and a half, if not seven, if not even a little bit more. So I found that when I got to 5% body fat, I genuinely, I just didn't need the sleep. It's either I didn't need the sleep or my body couldn't stay asleep uh, as long as usual. So I'd go to bed at 10 o'clock, usual time, but I'd be up at two, you know what I mean? And I'd wake up actually feeling refreshed, which is something I wasn't used to. That was definitely not the case, usually. So I, I was used to, you know, if I did wake up through the night, which I didn't normally, but if I did, my like I'd feel quite heavy in the eyes and I'd be like, right, now I'm definitely going back to sleep. But during the prep, when I was 5% body fat, you wake up at two in the morning after knowing you've only slept for three or four hours, but your, your eyes are wide. You know what I mean? You, you are wired. You're ready to get up and go again. Well, that's how I felt. So it was like, is that my metabolism just burning, burning, and, and, and I'm waking up through through hunger? Or is that just, I don't know, your body going into survival mode? Like, you guys tell me. I'm not sure what exactly happens there, but I'm telling you, you don't need as much sleep when you're shredded, or your body doesn't think it needs as much, or your body doesn't let you have um, as much sleep as if you've got a certain level of body fat. You know what I mean? So sleep's affected. Strength. Let's talk about strength. Strength is definitely going to be affected. You know, if we're talking about compound lifts, which I'm happy to say I kept in my, my routine throughout the entire prep. So I was doing some form of bench press on chest day. I was doing some form of uh, a bent over row on uh, back day. And I was doing squats every time plus lunges, plus something else on, on leg day. But my strength slowly but surely tapered down. So it's going to happen, especially on big things like that, big lifts. Actually having a, a heavier body weight, even though some of that additional body weight is from fat, is going to cause you to be stronger. It just is. It's going to strengthen your entire body. It's going to put cushioning around joints and, and ligaments and tendons that you didn't have before. Um, you know, you will feel not as lethargic. You'll feel like you've got, a, you know, a full tank of gas, so to speak. And so your performances will be better than if you're 5% body fat, always trying to stay shredded. So if we're talking about numbers, squats, I was doing sets with 140 at, at the start or 120, 120, 140. I went down, I didn't go lower than 100. So I was still able to maintain sets of at least 12, 10 to 12 with 100 kg even at my most fucking fatigued, which I felt okay about. Uh, bench press, my strength went down from hitting, you know, a couple of reps, few reps at 100 kg to bringing it down to 80 and getting like six to eight. And then at the end there, I was literally doing all my reps with 60 kgs on the bench press, no more. In fact, I'd go over to something like a Smith machine or I'd start on a pick fly to, um, pre-exhaust the muscle so that when I did go over to a compound lift which I was always going to include in the workout I wouldn't have to use as heavy weight you know there's there's ways and means around it overall your performance is going to dip you know what do you expect uh, one thing I did notice and <laughs> you know I certainly noticed this at course when I was sitting in in the lecture room I'd be rugged up in this fucking hoodie and and track pants and Ugg boots and socks and everything and I'd still feel cold. I'd still get these shivers. And that's just through having a lower level of body fat. You know, fat is insulation and having 5% body fat, you're going to feel cold. You're going to feel the cold more so than others. And then you take your body hair off for a body bodybuilding show and holy motherfucking shit, it's like being out in the snow. Well, that's what I felt. So a negative or, you know, just a, a real... So a negative, I'd have to say, was would be to feel the cold more so than, than usual. I mean, I'm a massive fan of winter, but not like that. I would not want to be shredded as fuck trying to do a bodybuilding show in the middle of winter. Fuck that. Don't do it, guys. <laughs> get shredded in the summer, man. Get Bulk up in winter, get shredded in summer. Because the cold weather will not affect you so much. Okay. One thing, okay, one thing I'm actually dealing with right now. I have... A bony ass at the best, well, do I? I don't know. But I certainly developed a bony ass um, through getting to 5% body fat. So when you sit on a hard surface, you will feel your, t your fucking tailbone. 
you'll feel, oh, what is it? Your bloody pelvis. You feel your pelvis coming through the bottom of your ass cheeks, literally, on a hard surface. So it's true what they say. You know, you can't get comfortable unless you're cushioned. And that's something I've dealt with. <laughs> I had to deal with that for weeks. In fact, I started putting a cushion on this chair so that I could sit in front of my computer and not feel well it's not pain but it's just uncomfortableness it's it's you sit down and it's like two bones are sitting on the fucking piece of wood and that's just the reality of being i guess five percent body fat <laughs> so i thought i'd have to add that one in there because it was definitely a factor and i'm feeling it now i'm feeling it now i'm honestly feeling it now so anyways guys i reckon that's pretty much it i reckon that's pretty much it this is my entry into i guess question and answer type videos as far as bodybuilding is concerned. I want to continue making them. I get a lot of information from guys like Greg Doucette. He's got a fairly uh, out there personality, I feel. Um, I'm never gonna sort of be more on camera than I am off. Uh, I'm always gonna be myself, and this is me. So if you have enjoyed this video, if you've enjoyed my take on what it really feels like to be shredded, please hit the like button. Uh, please share it with your mates. And please subscribe. That would be absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for watching. It's been a fairly lengthy video, probably about 20 minutes. But I did have a fair bit of information that I wanted to put across. And I'm happy I have. So what does it really feel like being 5% body fat? It feels incredible. It's not easily maintainable. And there's certain factors I'm going to call them negative factors that come along with being 5% body fat and we've just covered them here so guys thank you for watching I'll see you in the next one I'm going to give a shameless plug to my brand Major Key Physiques www.majorkeyphysiques.com is where you can find all of your bodybuilding and fitness uh, gear it is my business it's just me if you want to support this channel you want to support me then support the business um, we've got great products and we're not going anywhere. It's, we've been in business for almost two years. I love the products. Everyone else that gets them does. It's just a matter of, it's just a matter of sticking around, man. It's a matter of sticking around, staying in the business, staying in the fitness industry, which is exactly what I'm trying to do with these videos. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more content, because there's always more content to come. I couldn't say exactly what it's gonna be, but it'll be around what I'm passionate about, and that's what you can find on this channel. Peace out. It's been a pleasure.